This is lesson 6.2 for fifth grade math, and we're going to subtract with unlike denominators, and we're going to use models. To subtract unlike denominators, we first need to give them a common denominator. One half is the same thing. It's equivalent to two fourths. If you look at my drawing here, we have this bar cut in half. So that's half of it, right? But if we cut it into fourths and we had two of them, that's also the same amount as a half. If this was a candy bar and it was cut into four pieces and you had two of the fourths, it would be the same thing as having half of it. If we did one half minus one fourth, well, then we would take away one of those fourths and we would have one fourth left over. See? What we do is we find fraction strips that line up equally and these will help us find equivalent fractions. So by lining up the fraction bar that had fourths next to the one that had a half, we could see what they had in common here, see? And we could just take one of the fourths away. The bigger the denominator, the more parts the fraction bar will have. One-third is going to have three parts. Two-sevenths is going to have seven parts. And we can use fraction strips to find common denominators. This would be one whole, that would be a half, and all of these are really a half because all of these line up. If you look coming down here, they all line up as a half. So a half would be the same thing as two-fourths or four-eighths or eight-sixteenths. These are all equivalent. We have one-third of this bar filled out, but it's the same amount as two-sixths or four-twelfths. They're all equivalent. Just lining up the different fraction bars, we can see where they meet. They all line up on that line, don't they? Two-thirds is the same thing as four-sixths. We can see they line up right here. So we could do two-thirds minus one-sixth and take one of these squares away and have three-sixths left over. See? So that's what we're doing in this lesson. We're lining up fraction bars, and you might have to line up three of them. It might not just be two, okay? because the third one might help you figure out what the other ones are. Here's three-fourths that are orange. We want to take one-eighth away. We line up one-eighth fraction bars. And if we take one of the little eighths away, we have one, two, three, four, five-eighths left. So three-fourths minus one-eighth is five-eighths. See? The three-fourths is the same thing as six-eighths. When we take one of them away, we have five-eighths. Look at this one. We have two-thirds of the bar filled out. We want to take one-fourth away. So we can line up another fraction bar where this one matches this line. See it right here? These two lines match. And this one's line, my lines aren't perfect, lines up with this bar. See? This lines up with that one. When we take away the one-fourth, that would be like taking three of these away, and that leaves one, two, three, four, five, six of the twelfths left over. So we had to use a fraction bar that was split into twelfths to help us figure out this one. See? Look at this one. This is one-third. It's the same thing as two-sixths. See how it lines up here? So two of these little one-sixths is the same thing as one-third, see? And if we wanted to take one-sixth away, we take that one away and we're left with one-sixth. So it's almost like we did two-sixths minus one-sixth equals one-sixth. And one-third minus one-sixth is one-sixth because that equals two-sixths, see? It's the same thing. Look at this one. Now we have two-thirds and we want to take away one-sixth. So we line up fraction bars that have sixths. It's split into six parts. That's what we're taking away. We can see that these line up here, don't they? These, are, these line up perfectly right there. If we take away one of these little six, we're going to have one, two, three, six left over. See? The two-thirds is the same thing as four of these six. Take a look at this one. Here's a whole one. Okay, if we have seven-tenths, 
So this is split into tenths, and we had seven of them, and we want to take away two-fifths. So this bar is split into fifths. So we take away, see how it lines up right here? The two-fifths lines up with the four-tenths. One, two, three, four. They line up there. And the only thing that's left out of the seven-tenths is three little tenths. So we know seven-tenths minus two-fifths is three-tenths. See? This two-fifths is the same thing as four-tenths. Seven-tenths minus four-tenths is three-tenths. It's just a different fraction bar that's broken up differently. We just use the one that has tenths. So here's another one. This is what a whole one would look like, and we only have three-fourths colored green. We want to take away one-eighth. So we use a bar that is split into eight parts, into eighths, and we take one little one away, and we can see that these line up here, don't they? So they match. They're equivalent. We're left with one, two, three, four, five eighths. So three fourths minus one eighth equals five eighths. See? This three fourths is the same thing as six eighths. See how it lines up at six? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's the same thing. It's an equivalent fraction. Okay? So what we're doing is we're lining up an additional fraction bar that matches the others. If that's how big one whole one is, then two-thirds would only be this much. And if we have two-thirds minus one-six, and we want we have these two-thirds and we want to take this little one-six away, well, then we get a fraction bar that is in six. We line it up to see where it would be with the two-thirds, and it would be one, two, three, four, six is the same thing as two-thirds. See that right there? If we take one of these little six away, we're left with one, two, three, six. See? That two-thirds is the same thing as four-six. So when we take the one-six away, we're left with three-six. See? So use an additional fraction bar. Look at this one. We have five-six, so this bar is broken into six, and five of them are yellow, so that's five-six of them. And we want to subtract one-fourth. So we have our fraction bar with one-fourth, and one of them, of the four, is filled in. We need to add another fraction bar underneath it to help us. So we find a fraction bar that lines up not only with this one right here for the fourth, but it has to line up with this one to here. See? These lines line up. Even though this one doesn't line up there, it does line up here. See? So this 5, 6 minus this 1 fourth is going to leave 1, two, three, four, five, six, seven twelfths. This is broken up into twelfths, and in order to take away a fourth, we had to take away three of the twelfths, see? And that left seven twelfths behind. So you might have to add another fraction bar underneath yours in order to figure it out. Now, if you don't have fraction bars, you can use line school paper to make them. You could make 12 lines equal one whole bar, that way, six lines would be half a bar, three lines would be one-fourth of a bar, four lines would be one-third, see, you just split it up, one-six would be two, but you'd have to make another whole set where ten lines is a whole bar. So if that's what you can do because you don't have a printer, you could do that, or you could just click on this description because this video's description is going to have a link to a printable free page of fraction bars that I found on the internet that you can cut out and use, okay? So if you have a printer, you can just click on the description and find it, all right? Now, the other thing I want to show you is we could have circles and split it up. Instead of having a long bar like this for our fractions, we could use like a circle, like a pizza. Each of these is a third. And if we added another line here, another line here, and another line coming down here, we could see that one-third is the same thing as two-sixths, see? We could even split it into fourths or twelfths or whatever we want. It's like how you would cut up a birthday cake, right? So, that is how we subtract using models to do unlike denominators. And we're going to learn in a couple of videos how to do it mathematically without the models, okay? 
So hang tight and I'll show you how to do that. But meanwhile, try printing out those uh, fraction bars that I've got linked in the description and try doing some of these. And if you have to use an additional fraction bar underneath these to help you solve it, then do that. Okay? I'll see you next time. Bye.